This episode, Land of the Dead with Jesse Prouty. Jesse is an artist, and of course, he has a knack for the visual. So, it comes as no surprise that he would be a fan of George A. Romero. And having liked his trilogy so much, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day of the Dead, it might come as a surprise that Jesse was disappointed by Land of the Dead. Unless maybe you saw it and you were too. If you want to know how Jesse was, give this a listen. This is I Want to Like This, Episode 12, Land of the Dead with Jesse Prouty. And then it's what Rebecca's talking like, Oh, yeah. yeah. But you can do that. You can do that at comedy shows. You can do that anywhere. If you just if you just go out and there's a group of people and you just go, Sweet Caroline. You can watch a whole crowd of people go, Ba, ba, ba. And, like, move their heads to it. It's it's great. Like, there's, like, certain cues that people always know. Like, you cannot go anywhere in Texas without going, uh, the, st- the stars at night are big and bright and everyone just clap. Deep in the heart of Texas. There's a couple songs. There's, like, there's cultural, like, mark points. Like, if you, uh, you did at the, uh, Vanguard show. Yeah. The electric slide gimmick. No. No, what was it? No. What was it, it was, uh, guess it's, uh, the, the shuffle. What is oh, it? Cupid Shuffle. No. Yeah. No. Oh. What is it? The, uh, come on, shuffle? get funky. What well, it's what the cast black power too. Coming back to, I think it's a Cupid Shuffle. No, Cupid Shuffle came out years later. Was it? Yeah, I don't remember. that's the down down do you now? Oh, down. that's right. That's the Cupid Shuffle. Well, no, it's the. Um, I hate the Cupid Shuffle. I don't know. I don't um, know. we're doing this. Oh, we are doing this. We're already recording, aren't we? It's like the slide party shuffle or something. It's something like that. Anyway, this is I want to like this episode twelve. Uh, today we're talking. Land of the Dead. With hey, guess who's back? Back again. Jesse's back. back again. He's our friend. Am I bringing sexy back? Or is it the wrong song right now? We totally I think I was actually we referencing a homophobe when introducing you. Well, no, he made has, up for it. Well, he has. Yeah, he, yeah, he still writes homophobic as, song yeah, lyrics. Yeah, he came out as gay on the interview. I yeah yeah well, did. that was a great Fuck moment. Yeah, Eminem. Uh, He's but, the kind of dude like I, I I messed around with dudes like that a lot in high school the the the, the wannabe thugs. Yeah. He's the kind of dude that'll make homophobic references, but then let his gay best friend suck him off for the kind of day. Yeah, just been laying out a big trail of gay breadcrumbs. <laughs> anyway, to quote him. God damn it, Jesse. Okay, so we're gonna talk Land of the Dead, Jesse. We talked to you when we did um. <laughs> Dracula, Dra- Dracula Untold. Dracula yeah. Untold. I'm currently flipping off my assistant as hard as I can. Because uh, <laughs> she's getting sick while we're recording the podcast. Allergies. I feel bad. Damn allergies. But we talked about uh, your love of horror movies. And uh, you like the Hammer Horror films. You love... You love the George Romero series of horror films. So explain to us why you were excited to see Land of the Dead. Well, Land of the Dead, I believe, came out after Dawn of the Dead, the remake, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Dawn of the Dead, I was 17. I had to have my older friend get me in against my mother's permission on a weeknight when that came out in order to see Dawn of the Dead because I have been in love with George Romero's work since 6th or 7th grade. And 7th grade, I did a whole report on the Vietnam War because Ooh. I read a report. I read a an interview and then watched a documentary where George Romero mentioned specifically that part of the reason he was inspired to do Night of the Living Dead was in protest of the Korean and Vietnam War. It's a sort of, like, you know, um, pompous, warring society gets torn down by its, you know, own past and mistakes. Like, yeah. You know, the, the past rising up and devouring the, you know, the living. And he was really adamant about it. So he was really uh, an anti-war protester that would just got into horror films. And plus, it was so super low budget, but so well done for its time. Um, and then I just the discovered... practical effects on it are fantastic, and they they don't even yeah. feel dated. No, and not then, too bad. And then um, I, I love, uh, I mean, Dawn of the Dead, the original. That's classic. Yes, classic. And they actually have a black heroine in that movie, a her- her- hero, black hero in that yes. movie. Because in the first one, the black yes. guy got killed off. So sort of got retribution there, and so then they, they buck the trope. And then Day of the Dead. Talk about super dark. 
super dark. Yeah. Uh, you know, what is that? What do they call that? I forget. But um, yeah, no, it's super dark. It's like anticlimactic. Uh, there is no cure. It's, they, it's really defeatist. Yeah, they it's get incredibly defeatist. They give up and live what little what little years they have left on an island in somewhere in the Caribbean. Yep. Great. I loved it also because it was set in cities that I had actually grown up going to in Florida when I lived there. Um, but that was by far the most intense of the three. Um, and I think the most realistic as far as who would be surviving and how they would survive. Um, so when that. Land of the Dead, heard that was coming out, heard Joji Romero was coming out of retirement to do it, I freaked the fuck out and waited, waited for years for it to come out. And when it finally did, I, I you know, and that's, that's why we're doing this, because it, it was cool, but it just kind of missed the mark and left me kind of going, well, why did you even do it? Uh, yeah, I, I I agree. And like the next section we can talk about, I think we can have a lot to talk about because the what you like about this, there's there's so much on this that is good. The like the things I liked about it are they're very. This movie is just zombie fodder, like it always is. Mm -hmm. But George Aramaro is so good on the shots he picks and the practical effects. Like their like you said many times, their whole budget is practical effects. And a couple explosions. Well, and you could tell it was done, and I, and I know Tom Savini did a cameo, but I bet you he probably, you know, because George Romero and Tom Savini are lifelong friends, he probably had a lot to do with, you know, what artists they went with, what production companies went with in order to do the makeup, um, because Tom Savini, he's, I don't know how many Saturn Awards he's won, but he's like a legend in the makeup world. So um, now let's just go through a list. What did you like about this film? What's about this film delivers for you? The way it looks, um, like like there were a couple parts where I was like, "Can I see that makeup there?" And then they show the same zombies all the way through, from like sort of like the semi beginning to all the way through to the end. It's the same pack of zombies being yeah. led by. It's the, that like, one town of zombies yeah. led by. Uh, and and Big Daddy. and no, like their makeup is pretty spot on. They really it doesn't look fake. It doesn't look low budget. They 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 looks like they sat around and pow out about how many different ways can we kill these zombies? Yeah, and. I like that they went with, I mean, in Day of the Dead, one of my favorite films, I just watched it two nights ago, partly because I love the soundtrack, too. It is low budget and awesome. <laughs> um, but they have uh, zombie Santa Claus. They have a zombie clown. They have a zombie bride. Like, Did you notice uh, something soundtrack-wise from this, from the mall? Maybe for a moment. What when the notice? band is playing, in the opening, when the band is trying to play uh -huh. in the gazebo, they're actually playing the theme, uh, the gonk from the mall. Oh. On their instruments. That's oh, okay. what they're trying to okay. play. Okay. So it opens with the theme from the mall. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a, he, he's definitely doing a nod to, like, I guess, people he's worked with throughout his entire career, which I think awesome. Like, yes. you're going to come out of retirement. Why not? Have a million cameos. Let's just do it. He did. He yeah. had a million cameos. Yeah. So why not? That's cool. So I liked that. I liked that it was classically uh, a George A. Romero film. There was no doubt about it. But I just feel like it went too campy. Well, it, but that's the problem with the zombie films once you start raising the number and because this movie is the zombies own the land you're, it's it's going to lean to camp especially since there's so many that are so far decomposed like we have the band and it's this weird thing about the increasing intelligence of the zombies how they seem to try and be reclaiming their humanity in this movie which I actually think is kind of a neat idea like once they take over what do they do how do they do they just decompose or do they just consume and consume and consume? Well, I, I will basically, because it's George R. Romero's fourth installment of the original, like what people in the you know zombie fandom world call the Holy Trilogy, that's yeah. how I've always referred to it, the night, dawn, and day. Um, in Day of the Dead, the way that film ends, and it's I wanted Jerry to watch Day of the Dead because I don't think he's ever seen the original. You have? Well, if you remember Bub, um, yeah. he was the domesticated zombie he george romero had the idea to do this for years for yes. like 30 years it was always part of the storyline it was always going to be the next chapter and he it continued he played on those ideas and this is the next logical step but i just feel like it's a little too tainted with other movies that were, it's like the the whole movie Whoa. flavor and atmosphere that was going on in the early 2000s yeah this totally mirrored that and it lost yeah. that essence yeah with the lighting the lighting was the key the lighting and the, the way it was written when and, they're in the yeah. outside world they do the thing of uh just oversaturating reds and blues and stripping all the rest of the color out which is just seems to be 
the textbook for it's dark and it's dangerous nowadays. Um, I I do love that they. I I hate how the people become inside the city, especially when they gamble with zombies. They they take pictures of zombies, but it is a very honest portrayal of how humans are capitalistic, and I think I that, think people would take advantage of yeah, the zombies. It, and I it, think to, to a degree, but of it's course, also kind of a nod. There's two people. The, my favorite cameo in the movie yeah. is in that scene, and it's um I can't fucking name Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright. <laughs> Uh, in photo, photo booth, and they kind of, in their movie, um, Shaun of the Dead, which is the whole reason they got in this cameo, is George A. Romero loved Shaun of the Dead, so he invited them for this. In their movie, they show zombies being used uh, further on. They show the domesticated, even with his best friend. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a sh- zombie game. Yeah they, sh- yeah, they show zombies being used in this manner, and I think they made this concept, and George A. Romero just fucking, like, yeah but it'd be insidious because zombies would conquer. Right, and I and I think, you know, well, the thing the film so, does right is I think, you know, at the, at his heart, I think George Romero is, is truly uh, an auteur as far as, like, he's an artist, filmmaker. He has something to say. And once you talk to him and you, and you see, you know, kind of get a little bit more of an idea of what his political leanings are and the way he feels about society, like, he's definitely, you know, this is his, this is his criticism. He's being critical of society and materialism and, yes you know the one percent and and then the other and uh, yeah you know, i said that this movie is yeah. totally the 99 yeah. percent taking back from mm-hmm. the one yeah. percent and i love that i love like, that's one of the things i loved about this film is george A. romero stays on script for who he is yeah, he's definitely anti-government you know yeah. he, he he nods that you know it's the people in charge that keep the rest of us squabbling over our vices and are just feeding into it keep us and distracted. we consume ourselves yeah while they sit on fucking ivory towers, yeah, which is a big idea of this movie, and I like it. I just, I just feel like it was over dramatized. Yeah, the narrative was just the drawn narrative out. was it's... played out. Um, I, 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 I love John Leguizamo, but he, he plays the same typical character. He played that same character in a movie where he was a boxer. Yep. before this film, and I'm just like, okay, it's the same character you always play. It's yeah. no offense to John Leguizamo. No, John Leguizamo is like very entertaining in this, even when he's a zombie. John Leguizamo is very entertaining, but he does seem to be pigeonholed. Stereotypical, you know, tough guy. No backstory. We know nothing about him. Yeah. He's a completely flat character. Except dispens- where he works for the guy. Uh, yeah, he, he's dispensable. Yeah, you know, there were certain parts like the beginning. It says eats, and then it's like you know there are certain nods, and that's that's once again George Romero. He does that a lot. He's he created in many ways. George Romero created the zombie genre. He started it. Yeah. He started the whole zombie craze. Without Night of the Living Dead, we would not have anything. Oh God, we no. have now. And you can make an argument for Zombo, but that's not going to fucking break like the Living no, Dead did. No, and um, I, he's you know he was the one who come up with in every zombie film. If even if you watch ones that are you know more obscure, they always do the somebody leans over and turns red or red is an important bulletin is coming on. That drives me nuts, but he does it on purpose. Yeah, um, his films always seem to reflect the social climate of the time i mean in this of, one yeah yeah in night of the living dead i remember the first time i showed that to my stepmother who loves watching films and we are often film buddies together when we have time she watched it and at one point because she's a she's she's a really strong woman independent she got up and left the room she's okay she's like okay i can't fucking watch this anymore yeah. she's like these women are falling down and it's like oh no i tripped over a leaf i'm gonna drag my leg and get caught by the zombie and that's <laughs> totally how the women are in night of the living dead yes yes but it is i believe they that are... he was doing that on purpose to show how women were viewed in society. Yeah, and had played these victims up for movies. Yes, men they always really had to hammed up. Them. Like, my favorite scene... Because it's the... so, yeah. so strong in his vision. Like, they they fall so much. And the zombies are going two miles an hour yeah. in the original because, you know, it's not like Dawn of the Dead remake zombies where they're fucking cougars yeah. that just don't happen to not have a heartbeat and have half an arm hanging off. But uh, I remember my favorite scene in Night of the Living Dead that, that I just laugh out loud now because I'm so, you know, desensitized to it is they're in the truck at the end, and she's like, my jacket's caught. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, how many more helpless could you be? Like, yeah. my jacket's caught. Like, it'll take the fucking thing off. And this this actually yeah. does have a lot of the inverse. Like, yeah, it does. It does. They're, these strong girls, women. Yeah, stronger yeah. women, stronger female characters. But at this point in time, this was competing with, um, like... Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. This was competing with Resident Evil. Evil yeah. Who, you know, Mila Jovovich, she was... Awesome. 
I mean, even I got a boner for Mila Jovovich when she was in that red <laughs> mini dress and commando boots with an axe. I mean, oh, for yeah. anyone who doesn't understand, Jesse's gay. <laughs> like, mm. I don't know if you know that on this podcast, mm. but yeah. So Jesse saying Mila Jovovich, yeah. She was. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. So he was, I can see why he was competing, and you have to have like these yes. strong female characters. But I think they are also commentaries on those strong female characters, because they're such tropes. This girl is obviously, like, all of them have that dark backstory where they're abused yeah. by some guy. And that seems to be like a leading backstory for I feel all like the these only two. Th- I just feel like there was so much more avant garde and 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 um, just much so much more character development in his other films. I also well, you know, he was working with uh, more restrictions on him in the other films because he didn't have as much to work with. Now he's a legend in the field. There's a lot for him to work I with. I feel like the, I think the we've already wasn't slipped there. into what the we're going to complain about what we don't well, like. Well, okay, no. The, the writing about it, it, yeah, the writing's not there. The concept is there. The concept's there from the start, but there's something about the scripting that does seem, um, feels like tried and true, but it also feels like it has all it's predictable. the... predictable. And also, the way the dialogue works, it feels very cliche for the genre. And they went for all the easy... Okay, so I, I, I do have a few more things that I did like about the film okay. before we just jump, because there's so many things that, you know, I Because we, we've on. already kind of broken into the stuff you don't um, like. What I like about the film, I like that it, you know, like his all his films, it has a good pace. Yes, it had a good pace. It had a good plot development as far it as that goes. Does take mo- what I like about him is there's a lot of times in those movies where there's just so much going on, none of it takes its moments. Right, and he takes moments for the deaths. That first scene where the kid kills himself, that is a moment that he takes. That you see the humanity in your lead character. You see John Leguizamo being ready to fucking just pull the trigger every time, which makes him seem kind of jealous, yeah. Especially when he doesn't want to do it for himself, and then uh, the kid to pull his uh, to pull the own trigger, just to not be a zombie, like that weighs on every character. And it's a great starting point. There were a lot of scenes where you know he he does play off the whole uh, corruption theme, you know, mm. where there are a lot of people that this is what they're dealing, this is what they're they're dealing with, like like there is no more world. Um, I like that. He doesn't spend a lot of time explaining because we already know what's happened. Yes. We already know. Actually, in the other three films, the great thing about it is in the credit scene and all the black and white, he's showing what's happened to the world. Yeah, it's fu- yeah, it's fantastic. He doesn't need to. No. So it's like you know, it's been it's been thirty plus years since his first film. Everyone's seen him. He he yeah. doesn't have to. He already knows his audience. The tagline pretty much says it all. The dead shall inherit the earth. Is yeah, the tagline for this movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh god, I love a good tagline, and this one, I, I think the dead shall inherit the earth is a perfect tagline. And it, I have a, uh, I have a question for Jerry, if if he's willing to answer. Yeah, Jerry. What did you like about the film? Hmm. And maybe you should move over to the other side so you can actually hear yourself on the voice. I can, but I I'll have to speak up. I'm obviously behind it producing. Um. Yay. <laughs> my job. I have to say that I really really loved some of the deaths and the makeup and this is even, this is me coming out as somebody that's not really that big a fan of the genre of oh, yeah, zombie films. Oh, not my genre either. Yeah, I I just don't like like especially after the whole uh TV series of Walking Dead blew up. I'm just like no, I'm over it. Well, I think that that, that but it's like, oversaturated. Yeah, I yeah. Agree. Well, yeah. yeah, it's it's but I mean, it's to, become to, very ingrained yeah. in our culture, and it's just like it's. And that's not to I'm say so, anything bad about the Walking no, Dead. No, it's brilliant, no, but it's yeah, it, it's, it's just the fact that it's like out. everybody, everybody's like zombies all the time, and I'm just I'm over it. So yeah. I don't. But when this came out, this hadn't just, happened yet. This zombie was, that movies was, just yeah. turned yeah. me off. So that being said, yeah, I did. Like some of the death scenes were so. Like visceral, like you just see the pulling the flesh off the skull. Oh my god! From the yes. mouth, that was beautiful. And then just like when they really show like close ups of just tearing, it, it just looks so. Oh, the realistic. hand apart in the silhouette. Yeah, oh, that hit me home. It was just like, like it for it being a, a zombie movie, and for us as a culture being just so 
desensitized to all of the, like the carnage and ripping apart. There are still things in this movie that you just cringe and it just. Uh, I've been to war and I turned away. I yeah, was... <laughs> so I love that because yeah. it's like with how desensitized we have become with the whole zombie culture, oh. it still had gut wrenching things. The scene where they go into the bunker that's been invaded and you oh. just see like they're reaching yeah. into the guy's mouth and they're pulling out like brains like, and oh. guts and everything. Yeah, yeah, and it's just you only seeing where the spotlight is. I thought that was really brilliant. Oh, that's great. The lighting yeah. cues on this is, are yeah. fantastic. He, yeah, uh, and then I love how how you nodded, uh, Ramiro. All, he does so many different nods with camera work. Like, you uh, open up and it just says Ethan, and you go straight into zombies. Like, that's awesome. Or the skateboard, the longboard the kid was riding, and it floats yeah. in the water, and all you just see, it, like, start anti-hero. yelling, anti-hero, and then here's the, the black zombie leading. Who's known yeah, as Big yeah. Daddy. I do want to say something about the performances and everything. Um, I really do think Eugene Clark, who played Big Daddy, the, the, the lead zombie... Like, you'd say that playing a zombie is pretty easy. This is the first time you see a zombie that's carrying kind of an emotional... Like, he responds to the deaths of other zombies, Mm -hmm. but without losing the fact that he is somehow not alive. Like, there's something more there. Oh, yeah, no, he's not... It's definitely like, no, I want to eat people. People are our food. I'm going to lead my people to our food source. Like, yeah, there's no... There's no... um, you know, he's not a good zombie. He he wants his interests are only in the other zombies. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. And I love the fact that Ramiro, with the way that he films, he's the Moses of zombies. Yeah. <laughs> he leads people through a body of water. Yeah. He is fucking he zombie did, Moses. He just didn't part it. <laughs> well, I think. No, but like yeah. with what Ramiro does is he shows us those different things where the zombies are regaining their humanity with Big Daddy, like. He, the he opening never... sequence, when we first see Big Daddy, there's a zombie cheerleader and a zombie boy walking hand in hand together mm. like they're on a date, and they yeah. walk past Big Daddy, who's working the gas pump. Yeah. Which was foreshadowing. He does a lot of foreshadowing in this film. The but anti-hero. All of those yeah. subtle nods where he just, like, he picks, he he's just, people are driving by taunting him, and he just happens to snatch a rifle off someone's back, and he just puts it on his shoulder. Because he knows what it's supposed to do. Well, you know, he, if you, if you, and that's where I'm so happy I watched the last one, Day of the Dead, which yeah. is the one that preceded this. This was the next logical conclusion. The next yeah. logical step from Bub was Big Daddy, because yeah. in, in Day of the Dead, Bub uses a gun and, and kills the villain and becomes mm-hmm. the anti hero in that film, too. So he's very much so, George Romero is very much the underdog. Also, in the other films, you know, there's always a strong black male lead. He does that on purpose because he grew up in a time where there's a lot of racism and segregation. Yes. So he, there's a lot of him, and that's where I'd say he truly is. In the as far as George A. Romero definitely qualifies for that tour theory. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, he is an artist. This is the canvas. Yeah, he's this painting is him. With. So I, I, as a as a fan who before The Walking Dead came out. I used to buy, when I worked at Borders, I still have I zombie art books where it's, like, extensively illustrated. Yes, yes. Like, you know, and and it's just, it's, I can't help it. It's, like, a lifelong fascination with horror films. And, and I, I grew up loving Misfits covers, so. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I grew up watching George R. Merrill's films, so I really looked forward to this. So there are a lot of things I liked about it, and then now I think it's time for the things we don't like. Yeah, there's plenty yeah. of stuff to enjoy about it. It is great zombie campy fodder, and, um, I mean, there's more campy zombie films, but... I don't think this is a horrid film. It is depressing when you compare the others, and let's explain that right now. What did you? What makes this something you you wanted to like, but you just didn't? I think it's because I I remember um, when DVDs were first a thing. I forced my father one Christmas to buy me all three, like of the, the the anniversary sets, like Night of the Living Dead, Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead. And then I discovered there was a remake when I was in high school. I'm like, they did a remake, yes. of Night of the Living Dead. Tom Savini did a remake, and it was amazing. Yes, it was. And, yeah, it was really good, and they really played up the strong female characters. So if you've not seen that, Jerry, you need to, the 1990 sure. remake. I've seen them. Like, he is such a pioneer. They, these films were such, like, for their time that, like, oh, my gosh, that was the first strong female heroine. Like, they were playing off the strong female characters from the 80s. So Yes, they did. Um, and it was sort of like a, let's update this and, like, Let's make our fans happy, and they did a great job on that one. The remakes they've made of these films... Are excellent. Yeah, like, the only Zack Snyder film I don't just want to punch him in the fucking mouth for is The the Dawn of the Dead. And it was totally different, had a totally different setup. 
It was set in the same place with similar characters, similar plot. They even referenced the first film, but I don't think George Romero was involved with that one. I am not seeing I think George he was Romero consulted. In because obviously he writers is... George A. Romero and James Gunn. Okay. James Gunn. Yeah. Of Guardians oh. of the Galaxy. Okay. And so Zack he Snyder. Re- so he's Guardians re- of the Galaxy, Marvel, Zack Snyder, uh, horribly to uh, DC. But hey, they bonded over zombies. Yeah. And I like that. So I think like so I I I, I that slipped my mind. He was involved in that one. A what, trauma writer. Yeah. Really wrote it. So it's like as a as a true artist, he was revisiting the same ideas, refining them. Like, I think he's fixing the problems from the first film, trying to update it to a new audience. And he had someone who's obviously, like, if you ever see James Gunn's work, especially his work in Trauma, he obviously has been heavily influenced by George A. Romero. So to work with someone who's such a fan of his and knows mm-hmm. the concepts he's working with is probably a good reflective circus. And I think that that film, that film Dawn of the Dead, seeing mm-hmm. that and then hearing, oh, Land of the Dead is coming out? Oh yes. my gosh, Dawn of the Dead was awesome! Like... That was my lead up into it I because totally just the soundtrack on Dawn of the Dead. That the, you know they had some of the last music recorded by Johnny Cash, which was fucking perfect for that yes. film. It was so good. The soundtrack was great. The the they had a zombie baby. That's how good it was. Yes, and um, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Once again, strong strong black male character in that yep. film, endlessly. And you know he has the same formula that he revisits. So I was really hoping for that, and it just feels like a watered down version. Yeah, it just this, felt like a watered down version. Yeah, the script just does not deliver in this one, and I think it's uh, they went there's it's so by the books George A. Romero that I just think this is something you know what it is. I think he would have benefited now from having a co writer like he did with James Gunn when he they needed did the something else. It just feels like the same old. He, he, he turned it. He turned this classic formula that he's been able to rework mm-hmm. over generations. Into like a one trick pony. Yeah, he and kind of turned something that he created and then just turned it into a cliche. Yeah, and he, he went for all the easy scares, and yeah, I'm like, it and cliche. it's the one behind you that's going to bite you again. Well, I was yeah. counting. I lost and maybe count. maybe that's what he was aiming for was the cliches because Is he it's... created them. Well, well, yeah, oh, yeah. it's the William, yeah. It's the William yeah. Shakespeare. Argument. Yeah, exactly. Shakespeare's not cliche. He created those cliches, but he maybe he is actually satirizing his own work by pushing the cliches. Uh, I don't know. We George should, A. Romero would be the type to do that. He yeah. totally would. He yeah. would be the one to comment Especially on his own uh, on his own the style. Way that you know, zombies and everything. I just have feel become. like you know, without the, without that prior knowledge, going it's speculation and what it delivers. Yeah. Like as a viewer, as an un, as an uninvolved viewer, because not everyone who saw that film when it came out, and I don't think it got a good theatrical release. No, um, did not. And I don't think it's doing great on IMDb. Uh, uh, no, no, not. I think it's like a five. Um, what I feel is like, you know, going into that, it's just like as an artist, as an art student, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to wave that flag again because mm-hmm. it, there's a lot of things that they say that do apply to film because film is another form of art mm-hmm. is if you have to have a paragraph or like an essay explaining something before you show it to a viewer, that it's not job. effective. No. Yeah. Like there's something to be said about art that was made for a purpose and says something, but it should be obvious you know, there's yes. always going to be Easter eggs in any kind of good form of visual art. But what people shouldn't have to do is explain themselves endlessly and leave their viewers confused. Yes. And I just feel like a lot 6. of people... 6.3, by the way. 6.3. Yeah. Um, about right. I just feel like, you know, it left... Um, I feel like the whole feeling of the film was muddled. There were good points and bad points, and it kind of leaves me somewhere in the middle, which is why I'm not surprised yeah. at that IMDb rating. It's not a terrible way to kill an hour and a half. It is not... If you want a the great if you want a great zombie film, watch Day of the Dead. Watch Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. This is definitely something good to have going. Like I used to go what? Uh no, yeah, keep going. Like I used to go to a uh I used to go to a goth club in Florida and they would um project movies in the background while yes. listening to like industrial and goth metal. And uh, this would definitely be one of those movies. It would totally that, fit. like this would be great in the background of like a like a Halloween party. Like it has all everything you want in a good like horror horror film. You know if you're bored, but like really deep like things that's chilling. Like to me, I watched Day of the Dead, and it was chilling. Day of the Dead is chilling. The music, the sound effects, the weird dead moan that happens so many times in that film. Um, just the way the characters are so like filled with fear and and angst and guilt and anxiety, like you really feel in this one. The characters are flat. The they only are. redeeming character is I can't remember the guy's name. The actor you pointed the guy from The Mentalist. Oh yeah, he's sexy in this film. I'll give him that. He's he's hot as hell, but he's playing the stereotypical good guy. 
the John Leguizamo, like, you know, loose cannon. He's the good cop, bad cop. Yeah. They basically cops in this film, and this is good cop, bad cop. And I just, like, you know, George Romero is very, very smart. Why did he go with all these obvious plot, like, like, I wonder if the, I'm honestly wondering now if the cliches are intentional for him. I think it might be satire. I, I didn't see anything I'd in it that to said pick that, his but I would, brain, be, yeah. I would love to. That's another person whose director whose brain would be fun to pick. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I, there are some things. It is, just, it is just kind of disappointing. It's not. It just doesn't. It doesn't live up to the amazing career that Ramiro has yeah, that's established Yeah, that's beforehand. the problem. He's been so great. And he is an auteur. I really do believe he's an auteur. I just think he Michael Jackson himself a little bit, you know, like... You know what I mean? Like, for you don't know I people, totally, that, for the gotcha. people listening to this, or whoever's out there um, in TV land, well, it's not TV. Anyway. Um, We're not saying getting accused for molesting children. No, I'm saying yeah. Michael Jackson was, his highest grossing album was Thriller. And he was never able to match the success of that album. And so I feel Which like George has Ger- connections. Yeah. I feel like George Romero kind of, you know, Michael Jackson himself a little bit. I, yeah, I could He's see that. He's trying to outdo himself, and I just think, you know... Sticking to the same formula is smart, but I wish he'd been a little bit more innovative because Dawn of the Dead, the remake that happened just a few years earlier. No, a year. A year earlier. It was a year, a year before. Exactly. 2004 I remember, and 2005, yeah. yeah. Like, that movie took so many chances, it but did. played on the I same theme. I think that's theme. James Gunn, though. Yeah, I think it's some. I think it's a younger writer who's really excited to work with George A. I don't know, going, we should do this. We should try this. It's and then edgier. a young director who's going to take... And Zack Snyder takes chances with visual effects. Zack Snyder takes chances with shots. He's a brilliant um, director of photography. <laughs> I, I just feel like like the one thing that I was hoping for with this film was like 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 a a really good like addition to the to the mythos that he's really created. And it, it just wasn't there. It just fell short for me. Well then And I got really turned off with zombies for a long time after this. I totally understand that. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what the next thing I have to ask now is, right? Mm-hmm. How would you have made this deliver? What What are you looking for? What would you? Have, how would you have made this film? There was no connection. Like I, I, I took a few film courses, film mostly film appreciation courses. But one thing we were asked continuously, and I had to fill out like twenty, like over the course of a semester, I filled out fifty fucking questionnaires, and I got so sick of it. But I, I like it because it sort of ingrained this sort of way to analyze films in me. Um, how does how successful is this um, film at connecting to its audience? And what I feel is your suspense of disbelief is totally dependent on how well a film connects to you, how yeah. well you can identify with certain aspects of the film that make you believe this could really happen. I'm willing to willfully suspend my disbelief long enough for the duration of this film in order to feel something from this film. Yeah. This doesn't do this. It throws you right into this world. You know, you almost have to watch the previous three films yes. in order this to does, this film. You, this does suppose that you have watched the previous three films. Yeah, there's this supposition there, but this huge gap of time between the originals and this, and it's like, you know, you should have helped, helped us to identify with some of the characters more. You should have helped explain what was going on more. You should have helped, like, you know, there should be more depth there. And there just wasn't enough to really get us to connect. Like, all the characters, are, they feel like, you know, they're stereotypes. He just reached into a bag and pulled out these little G.I. Joes. Yeah, he picked out like, caricatures. Okay, good cop, bad cop, whore with a heart of gold. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> and a damn good guy. shot. You know, we're going we're gonna to pull out the, the, uh, the savants, too. we got to have a savant in there. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. the physically uh, crippled, but not crippled in his ability. Yeah, so, and it's like, you know, there, there wasn't enough there for us to attach a story. And aside from yeah. John Leguizamo, there's not a death that makes you fear their impending doom. No, there's no, there's no, you don't identify or feel um, empathy with any of the characters in this film. Mm-mm. There are children that you don't get to know any of the children. Usually nope. children is a really good way yeah. to get some kind of, because, you know, we no one wants to see a baby or a child. Aliens. Being, yeah, nobody wants to see that. Gidget, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. wants to see that, but they, he didn't even do that. And nope. it was just like, you know... There is no real reason to be connected to the characters other than, oh, they're going to shoot zombies. There are no redeeming qualities to any of the characters. Well, no, well, yeah, the lead, who's a good cop. The lead, and then the girl who falls in love with him, or they're implying. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just, um, it's hard to get emotionally in- involved and invested, and that's what you want. There was no glimmer of hope. So what you're talking about is, you need one character's 
the things you would change is you'd add characters you can actually attach to yeah. backstories that you would care about these people. Yes. Reasons to care about them. Like the John Linguizamo thing. There's no yeah. backstory. There's no, no, we don't know anything. So you need depth of character. Yeah. Then you need character, the actual leads to be put in peril. To feel yeah. like they could die. And then there wasn't, it wasn't that. It you was... know what I always like uh, in a zombie film is when the lead actually gets bit and they're willing to sacrifice a limb to stay human. Well, he's already proven in this universe that he's created because yeah. he's sticking in his own universe. Anything that dies, anybody that dies, not, not, not animals, anybody that dies, regardless of whether they're a bit or not, comes back. Yeah. Because it's something. It's a germ. They didn't. He never really explains it in the sixties. It's like in the air. It was radiation because yeah. that they were they were it was the Cold War when he made that film. So they were afraid of you know nuclear holocaust. Um, and you know as we've gotten after the AIDS scare and now the cancer scare and you know this you know, bird flu is big at two thousand five. Yeah, yeah. So. And this hypochondriac society and yep. now all of a sudden it went from radiation to a virus. And it was a very clean and sanitary thing where the million uh, where the one percent live. In yes. Situation. Yes. So okay. So, so we need them in peril. We need characters we care about. Uh, what else do you change? Uh, well, it's dialogue script. Uh, the script is really the problem with this. You would have to take it back to a team of writers who know how to write characters. More they, than they like, just like it, it didn't even sound like they were talking like they were like they were real people. I yeah. feel like there's a way because I've taken writing courses too, and there's a way like you, you people rarely write the way they speak this is true and i don't feel like these writers were as skilled at writing well it's george R. romero dialogue. who wrote it and that's the problem like what the, happened Ke kevin smith has said this before uh he writes characters not necessarily how people talk but how he would in hope people would talk how he would like people to talk and it's like yeah, oddly enough yeah. though it with kevin smith writing the dialogue that he's made he's actually produced a generation of people who have colloquialisms in how he speaks uh -huh. in, through his characters. Uh, Jerry's nodding, because Jerry and I have many of these. Um, just pulling out words like colloquialism, that just a common sentence for me is a big thing, where Kevin Smith was like, oh, yeah, I have a vocabulary and diction. But, uh, yeah, this one is, they're, they're stilted, speaking. Um, there's a lot of cliches, but there's no depth in the dialogue. Nobody says anything meaningful. No, no one says anything meaningful. There's, there, they walk around saying obvious things throughout the whole film. That's it. That's what bothered me. Yeah. Nobody's saying what they're thinking. Nobody's saying anything about their past. Nobody cares. Everybody's disjointed. Everybody's disconnected. Not only does no one well, say... I mean, that's not entirely true. The The one scene of backstory you get is the lead. The, the, the good lead cop. thing. He, he doesn't want to know kill. anyone's fucking story. He though. had to kill yeah. his brother because yeah. his brother... But that's the turned. one thing you learn about him. That's the, the one thing about him. But even earlier than that, when they're in the jail, mm -hmm. he straight up says, everyone has a story I don't want to hear anybody. Yeah. And so it was like... by associated with him... But I think that actually that. is George A. Romero going, this is all bullshit. All people care about is the zombie kill. I think yes! It's him. I feel I like that's his... I think it's his subtle nod to going... No one actually cares about think, telling a story in these movies anymore. I think it's, yeah. I think it's his cynicism coming through. Yeah. I think it's probably a lot to do with you know how long he's been in the business, yep. how many films he's made. I think it, I think we were seeing a little bit of the cynicism coming through, especially since he wrote it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's that's his cynicism. And I think that's he was young and ambitious his, before, so yeah. he was really passionate, and there were these moving you know sentiments, not even like emotional, like, like not things that really touched you, but yeah, things that but, were really like powerful, but things that connect and make a point. Yeah, and, and I think this this, this movie that. this movie yeah. was him making a point of going. Everyone has done what I've done to death. So I'm just going to show a bunch of none of you of, and, and none of, of the audience. He doesn't feel the audience cares about it anymore. He feels the audience cares about and the I, visuals, I, and he saturated this movie with visuals. I, do I feel like do I feel like he was making a movie for someone like me? No. I think he was making a he movie was in spite of the people who watch his movies. Yeah, it, it, he was competing with how many different action horror thriller films that came out in the early 2000s. And the zombie genre, too. Yeah, so he was 28 competing. days later. Yeah, he was competing with all of that, and he was just throwing the practical effects at it. And then I even said, I'm like, I'm not sure if Tom Savini was in this. And then there he fucking was. But he was dressed the same way that he was in From Dust Till Dawn. Yeah. I was confused. Yeah, Maybe I, that's just the way he dresses. Yeah. He, he probably all I know is he is. welded a machete like a badass. Oh yeah, that but that's is... it. That's I think that's the problem with this one. I think he came at this with a different place, and I think he shortchanged himself making this movie because of it. Am I surprised that he hasn't done anything since? No, no. It's been a decade since he's done anything. Am I surprised? No, I don't think he. Well, will. He's also seventy-five. 
Well, I think that was it. I think that was it. <laughs> I think he's like, I made this at 65, I'm done. Yeah, I think he's done. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and unfortunately... That's in, the, the... In... in, in it, it, I, pre- I, as... Even though I'm a diehard fan, I would prefer to remember Dawn of the Dead as his final installment. Yeah. That remake of Dawn of the Dead, I would prefer to remember that. That's um, what I... There were remnants... He's of, made films since then. Yeah, but not but in the same genre. Yeah, no, 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 not in this. Stuff. He's not going back. He's on not it. revisiting, and that was as the in the, as as the final chapter in his. He's co-writing Day of the Dead remake. Oh, yeah. I'm hoping they get James Gunn on it again because I think that team. Day of really the well. Dead would be a really difficult one to remake because 1980. The soundtrack on that's fucking great. <laughs> yes. Um, the lead heroine is amazing. She's an amazing actress. Yes. Um, just everything about it is so good. You've... Now I'm gonna go back and watch that movie. So I, I'm gonna watch it again before I go to sleep tonight. I know, right? Um, mm-hmm. I really, I, I forgot what I was gonna say now. I don't know what you're gonna say either. But I think we've actually made a very good point. Like we ended on a really cool idea that this is George A. Arrow's just him, like a just way of just going, yeah. This is all you want in these movies now, so this is all you're gonna it's get. A good social commentary. It is a commentary. I think he's making a commentary on the people that watch and make the schlock films based off of his genre and just mm-hmm. kind of I think he would probably love The Walking Dead for the cultural context and actually how they build characters mm-hmm. and I think it is the antithesis of what he was trying to point out in this movie because I think this movie actually might be him making a commentary it's, I think I think what, what just, people forget is that enjoyable. zombie movies yeah. are rarely ever about the zombies They're it's not. about the well, people reacting to the, the people, situation yeah, the people it's about win. how the people interact zombies are always zombies represent the in a unpredictability of life and death, you never know what's going to kill you or what's going to happen. Yes. And it's always, like, what you're seeing is he's reflecting the macrocosm in a microcosm. Exactly. He's always giving a little flavor of what's going on politically, socially, you know, uh, intellectually, and, and emotionally. I think this time it's a commentary on the own, on the genre he really started. But either way... I like, after this discussion, I think I like this film more. But I still... <laughs> it still doesn't deliver the no, way you it wanted doesn't. it to. And they, I would redo the soundtrack completely. Oh, the yeah. soundtrack is not memorable at all. No. It's just typical... The Foley work is fantastic. Yeah. It's just it's just typical, like... da da na na So the guy who couldn't look at all the pieces getting ripped off people at some points. But the Foley work was great. Yeah, and you know, I... You could look away, but you could still hear it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I appreciate that he had, you know, it was sort of like, I think like he meant it as almost like a, like a grand gesture to his entire career. He had so many people involved yeah, um, that have always been there. I, I really like that there were CGI scenes. Yes, there were scenes, a couple CGI scenes. But it the was head, so, yeah. The headless, the, uh, cool. Every bullet went to the brain. Yeah. Was yeah. A CGI scene. But there were so many other things, just like Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead, the remake, like... Uh, the story goes there that they used like actual like guts, pig yeah. guts mm-hmm. uh, that look really really close to human, you know. Oh yeah, pig intestines, and, intestines. Look really good. and like Chicken. they said that by the end of the like end by end of like the three months of filming, they'd been keeping everything in like big five gallon buckets, yeah, covered in paint and dye to make it look disgusting. That it started to smell and and, and it really got you into character because it was just revolting and. I'm like that. There the, are extras who are zombies just vomiting on set. Yeah, that's the kind of of dedication that we're talking about, and that's what I saw in this film. So there was a lot of elements there that I do like. I mean, what it's I just yeah yeah I, I plan great on, cameos, great yeah. visual effects, great their performance, uh, just great zombie performance. Dennis Hopper, one of his last ones. But I, I think like this film, like like I think what he was throwing at everybody was like, here you want zombies? Here you're fucking zombies. It, it's no, zombie films are not about the zombies. No, it's about the the, the characters. It's and about I the think heroes, that was him just making a commentary on it. In his last movie, was just like a big fuck you, and I, I think it takes away from his legacy. Sadly, um, I kind of I enjoyed watching it, and yeah. it was cool making jokes yeah. with you while we watched it. And this was a fun podcast to do. Uh, George, if you want, where I don't know what to say. Uh, we wanted, I, I wanted to like this when I saw it, and I know Jesse wanted to like this. And uh, Jesse, uh, is there any way people can find you on social media or whatnot? Do you have a Twitter? I have a Facebook. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a Facebook. You have an artist page, don't you? Uh, Currently under construction. Under construction is called Ignite the Path Within. That's kind of the, the name I'm running with. I've had that page up for a while. It has some stuff on there that I do, but not everything. So okay. we'll see. Um Find ignite the uh, ignite the path within. So it kind of like find a, that yeah. harass them to put more stuff up on it. Yeah. And um, as of course you know, everyone knows. 
Uh, you can find more from me at the T Sinclair at on Twitter, the Thomas Sinclair on Facebook, and of course you can find everything I want to like this on the I want to like this Facebook, and of course I want to like this on Twitter. Um, that's really it this week. Yeah, Thank you I for sitting no problem. down and watching this movie and then podcasting at 3 a.m. No problem. In the name of one of my 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 personal heroes, you know, unpleasant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to watch the movies. Yeah.